Florida Atlantic Center, Vladislav Golden is in the transfer portal, a.k.a. Vlad Golden, a.k.a. Uh, I think this is a very good player. I know this is going to be a, a big hint, a big slant of I hope this is my future center in this video, but I'm going to try and talk about this as uh, objectively as I can. I think Vlad Golden's a very, very good player. I think he would be a very good player at a high major level as a starting center. He averaged 16 points, seven rebounds, just under one assist per game last year, 67% on the floor he does not shoot threes in fact i don't believe he has ever attempted a three-pointer in his career uh not a great free throw shooter not an awful one 66 percent on 190 attempts last year and uh not a big time shot blocker for uh his size i mean one and a half blocks a game that's fine that's fine for a 7-1 center in the american but kind of feels like it leaves a little to be desired there uh all in all i've always felt he's one of fau's best players I've always felt he's a high major level starting center. And uh, the implication here would be if he's in the portal, there's a high chance he may follow Dusty May to Michigan. What do you think of Vlad Golden's game first, Cart? Yeah, I've always been a big Vlad fan. Um, I, I actually always had the thought in my head that, you know, Florida Atlanta could use him a little bit more because at his size, he's he's not like one of the slouchy bigs. Like, I don't mean to do like the comparison to put another like seven footer down. But I feel like when most people look at Vlad and think about him as a seven-footer as American, they think he's like Matthew Nicholson from like Northwestern or something. That's just like not the case. He's mobile. He's active. I was actually very surprised when I looked at his stats and saw that he only blocked one and a half shots a game because I consider him to be a better rim protector than that. But he catches the ball. He finishes. Um, plays with a little bit of an edge, too, which I like. Uh edge flopping whatever you want to kind of it, it, it teeters between the two sometimes but um I think at his size you don't find many college basketball players that have the mobility he does the ability to catch the ball that like he does and the ability to finish like he's I always have an affinity for bigs that at that size they try to dunk everything and I think Vlad is one of those guys that when he catches it he's trying to dunk the ball and finish it and um you know I think he'd be a a good ad for any team in the portal. Um, now, I know there's a lot of implications, obviously, that he might follow Dusty in this case, um, which I think we should start by doing this, Greg. You should clear up anything about the un, uh, the the rumors that he won't be able to transfer because of Michigan admissions, but because Vlad will be a grad transfer, which I'm not sure if he graduated yet, but I think, or does he plan to be a grad transfer? I don't know. He's listed as a grad transfer on some sites, some sites he's not. Yeah, he's listed as a graduate. My understanding of that would mean he is graduating this term, which would mean he would then be free to uh, transfer to Michigan or wherever he would like. Yeah, listen, the the whole Michigan admissions thing, it's, it's a funny joke for rival fans, and it certainly was an obstacle to getting key players in the Juwan Howard era. It is still an obstacle to getting some types of players. Like Michigan institutionally – is still not an easy place for sophomores and juniors to get into, depending on what their major is, depending on what their degree program is. With that said, there has not ever been an issue for a grad transfer to get into Michigan. So there are a lot of people who are uneducated on the topic of, uh, oh, is Michigan admissions going to let him? Like all of these Florida Atlanta guys on paper have graduated. That includes John L. Davis, who is not in the portal yet. That includes Vlad Golden. That includes Nick Boyd, who is in the portal. I believe Giancarlo Rosado, who entered the portal, is a grad. All these guys graduated. Uh, now, <laughs> will they all go to Michigan? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, depends on who you listen to. I think my gut on this with Vlad, feel pretty good about him going to Michigan. Uh, I think Nick Boyd feel pretty good about him going to Michigan. John L. Davis and Elijah Martin, who both are still not in the portal, no clue what's going to happen with them. Um, what I am hearing, I've talked to enough people behind the scenes. What I am hearing is something we actually predicted may be true a couple weeks ago. Elijah Martin may not want to take a backseat to John L. Davis anymore. Um, I think that's perfectly fair. It's a perfectly reasonable thing for a player of Elijah Martin's caliber to feel. And I think they are probably behind the scenes working out what's going to happen with those two guys. Like, hey, if John L. doesn't follow Dusty, does Elijah then want to follow Dusty and be his his star? Uh, if John L. does follow Dusty, is Elijah completely out on that? Probably. 
Uh, is Dusty May choosing one over the other? Is Dusty trying to court John L. Davis knowing Elijah Martin won't want to come? Or is he trying to get both? Or is he trying to get neither? I don't know. There are a lot of questions. The point is, those guys, at the time we're recording this video, Tuesday, April 2nd in the morning, those guys aren't in the portal. Now, Davis Mosley, who's come on our show before, says expect them both to enter the portal soon. So, I, look, I don't think any of these guys are going to remain at Florida Atlantic. I don't think all of them are going to play for Michigan, but I don't think any of them are going to end up in Florida Atlantic, at least not this core from the last couple of seasons. Uh, with that said, Jakus, come out to play, my friend. I see you. I see right through your shit, Jakus. Jakus, you know what? You wanted a standing ovation, Jakus. Let's give you one, Jakus. Jakus, it's Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday morning and 66% of your core's in the portal, Jakus. You told me this wouldn't happen, Jakus. Congratulations, Jacobs. Uh, that's my op. That's my first op of the season of the Dusty May era. That's Florida Atlantic's new coach, Jacobs. I will not say his first name out of disrespect. Uh, he, Yeah, he did his intro press conference and said, look around. None of my players are in the portal. I said, just wait, Jacobs. Yeah. He, he, he was right. At, he was right at the time. Yeah, just wait, Jacobs. He wanted flowers for uh, guys that had just met him 10 minutes earlier not being in the portal. Uh, yeah, I, I think Vlad Golden's going to end up at Michigan Wolverine. That's my read here. I think so, too. So, doing a little uh, projecting here, Vlad, obviously, like you mentioned, good you know, good finisher, good rebounder, solid shot block, above average shot blocker. Let's say one and a half. But we expect, you know, him to be up in, like, the two range with his size. And I don't think he's a good shot blocker. Like, you, I, I think – I think he's big. I don't think he's a good shot blocker. Okay. Good rim protector? I think, like, by default, like, people aren't challenging him at the rim. But, like, he's he's 7'1", 240, and he blocks less than two shots a game. To me, that's – Yeah, that's that's, insane. That's That's less than college – that's less than college Carter Elliott for context right there. Um, How do you feel about, like, his his minutes or, I guess, his role with Michigan? Because – he started to pick it up towards the end of the season, like with his minutes, like playing like 28 minutes. But before that, you know, 20 minutes a game, 22 minutes a game, 20, like he was like a 25 minute a game player. What do you see? Like, do you see his role like expanding like in this next season at Michigan? Or do you see like, or is he like a 25 minute a game guy and you got to rotate him in with another center uh, or another big? I think it really depends, um, and it depends on another guy that I might want to talk about. Maybe we do a second video right after this. Um, I, I, I'm talking about Danny Wolf. Danny Wolf is rumored to be a heavy Michigan lean, high-priority Dusty May target. Uh, now, again, Vlad Golden was at that Rat Jacus' intro press conference. And uh, Vlad Golden had a smile on his face along with Elijah Martin. Didn't necessarily know if he would hit the portal. When you're watching that unfold and Jake is saying, oh, I got all my guys still. You're thinking, okay, maybe Danny Wolf is going to be Michigan center next year. Now Vlad Golden enters the portal. I think him and him and Danny Wolf might be playing a little game of chicken with each other because depending on who you believe, Danny Wolf has told coaches not to contact him. And uh, Danny Wolf originally wanted to walk on at Michigan a couple of years ago. So there's a connection there. I know that Dusty May is already after Danny Wolf and other coaches aren't allowed to contact him. Do with that what you will. Uh, to me, that's a really strange fit. I don't, I don't understand why Danny Wolf and Vlad Golden would both want to commit to the same school. Um, with that said, maybe this is me just putting my, my wishing hat on, but Danny Wolf might think he's a four and Danny Wolf might want to play the perimeter (laughs) and Vlad Golden is certainly not a four. Vlad Golden has never attempted a three pointer in his career. So, you know, you know what happened with Danny? What happened with Danny? He played two centers in the NCAA tournament, like high major centers. And he said, ah, ah, maybe Ah. maybe the four would be better for me. Maybe I don't want to go against like Janai Broom and JD on Lee. Like, ah, maybe the four is for me. Well, that's the thing is, like, this is an all big man epidemic, right? Every five believes there are four. Every four believes there are three. Go on down the list, right? Like, you you want to flow to the perimeter. We don't blame yeah. Danny Wolf for that. Um, no. But, but I, look, regardless of if Danny Wolf is there, I think, uh, 
I think Vlad Golden would start for Dan, Dusty May at center for at Michigan. Um, now, I think the, the cool thing about Golden and why it could work with another ad as good as Danny Wolf is I don't think Vlad Golden needs like 35 minutes. I, I don't think that's his game. He, his high career at Florida Atlantic was 25. He played 21 his junior year, or his, I guess his sophomore year, but his third year at Florida Atlantic. So I, I think if he's coming to Michigan to start at center, you're probably not penciling him in for more than 25 minutes as is. So you need another big. And depending on how these two feel about each other, if you had that as a front court, one, monster front court, two, Danny Wolf plays 15 minutes at center, 15 minutes at the four. Black Golden plays 25 at center. Boom, your front court rotation's taken care of. And I quite frankly don't know that there would be many better front courts in the country than Vlad Golden and, and Danny Wolf. Now, long way to go on that. I don't know what the latest is with Danny Wolf. Uh, I feel much more confident that Vlad Golden will be at Michigan than Danny Wolf will be. But again, I think it could be an arms race here. I think Wolf was probably sitting back, like, oh, I'm going to commit to Michigan. Wait a second. Vlad Golden's coming? Now you got to win that recruitment again. Um, between the two, I will say this. I think I would rather have Danny Wolf than Vlad Golden. And Vlad Golden's a great, like, high floor guy because he's been with Dusty before and you know what you're getting. Uh, I, to me, you only have one year of Vlad. There's not, like, Big Ten superstar potential there. He'd be one of the better centers in the league, but he, he's not going to be, like, a first-team All-Big Ten guy. No way. Um Whereas Danny Wolf, you're getting multiple years of eligibility out of. He has a really nice offensive bag, perimeter skills. There's theoretical things Danny Wolf can still grow into that I think Vlad Golden, Vlad Golden is who he is. A very good player, a very good starting center, not a superstar. And on a good team, I mean, we just saw Florida Atlantic. On a good team, he's your third best player. On a great team, maybe he's your fourth or fifth best player. Um so that that's my read on it. Do you agree with where I'm at with all this? Yeah, I do. And spe especially because you you mentioned the multiple thing, the multiple year thing with Danny. One thing I do want to mention though is that uh S Sanderson loss will be massive with these two. Cuz Sanderson would have Golden playing 30 minutes a game, <laughs> and I think that Danny Wolf needs to reshape his body just a little bit to like completely unlock himself. He's still got a little bit of little bit of baby fat on him but he's a he's a sophomore he's a young guy but like he, his body i think could be even be transformed to make him more of a monster um but yeah I, I i'm with you i i have a hard time if i'm picking between the two between wolf and gold and not taking the guy who's seven foot who is shooting 35 percent from three and has the skills and i've seen the bag and you know i i don't you know, better from the free throw line as well. Like I, there's just, there's a lot there. Obviously it's in the Ivy league, but I think there's, there's room for growth with Danny Wolf as well. I think together, like if I'm picturing like a, a golden wolf front court, it's hard to not say, damn, that's, I mean, that's two seven footers playing in the front court. That's, that's something. It's also like two seven footers that aren't shot blockers or, but also their offensive games complement each other. Um, but I can't really make a comment on how I feel about them defensively just as a whole. Like, yeah. I, I think Golden's like pretty good as a drop coverage big and what I've seen of him. I haven't seen enough of Danny Wolf to comment on it. He did really struggle in those tournament games defensively. I will say that at the five, yeah. but you know, the sophomore, true sophomore, first time in the tournament and he gets thrown Jani Broom and JD on the at him. Like that's, that's a real, that's a tough, like welcome, welcome here moment. Um, but I did want, I did, I came in wanting to see more, uh, yeah. after yeah. hearing about his name. So now that, that here's, here's my thing with that. If this was actually the pairing, I think Danny Wolf will be a disaster defensively, no matter what position he's guarding, right? Like I, if Danny Wolf is guarding big 10 fives, I think he gets torched. If Danny Wolf is guarding big 10 fours, I think he gets torched. So is, is him guarding big 10 fives really the him? Like who's the big 10 five he's. I mean, it's, we're, we're, yeah, we're a year away. I'm assuming there will be some transfer portal additions and Zach, yeah, he's but, gone, but like, but look, I mean, you're looking at it right now. Like people forget TKR six, nine. I, I, to me, TKR Malik renew will destroy him. Um, I, again, we got to wait and see what other guys come in. You're right. It is going to be a down year for big 10 bigs, but 
I guess what what I'm trying to say is I actually have talked myself into this mentally where offensively, I think Wolf and Golden works fantastic because the the big sell on Wolf is like passing. Like they high lows with Wolf and Golden would be killer, I think. And you surround them with guard, like three guards plus those two, I think is perfect for a Dusty May system. Um, Especially with Wolf's passing ability. Right. Like Wolf, when you just run, you bring him out to the top of the, the key and he just let him work when, with shooters around him and a big. Like I think it'd be really good. Um, now, defensively, you have concerns, but I like. I like it defensively more with Golden under the rim than I do if Danny Wolf was the five, because I think if if Danny Wolf's getting blown by, then okay, Vlad Golden's there, and at least you have some sort of rim protector. Um, that I do think there would be big time defensive concerns, though. We'll see. One thing I want to give Vlad credit for, just quickly, this is again we spent too much of this time talking about Danny Wolf. I want to do that for a separate video. Uh, I want to give Vlad credit. And you don't like giving anyone from Florida Atlanta credit last year. So fact check me here if I'm being too facetious here. Of all three of the Florida Atlantic guys, to me, two got a lot better from their final four season to last year. And then one didn't. One got worse. Vlad Golden is one of the two that got a lot better. Him and John L. Davis Mm -hmm. took big leaps forward from the guys they were in the final four year to who they were last year. Elijah Martin didn't. And Elijah Martin was hurt. And that's fine. I'm not writing him off as a player. but Elijah Martin got worse. Uh, Vlad Golden went from a 20 minutes a game guy, 10 points, six and a half rebounds, just one block, that's it, to 16 points a game, seven rebounds, one and a half blocks, playing five extra minutes, increasing his efficiency by from 62% from the floor to 67% from the floor, increasing his free throw percentage from 59% to 66%. Like across the board, Vlad Golden was a way better player. To me, even more than John L, because John L's production increased. I didn't necessarily think John L got much better or more dynamic or added to his game. Vlad Golden to me was like, wow, this guy's better than he was in the Final Four. And uh, I think there's reason for optimism how he would translate to the Big Ten just in that alone. Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, I think Golden got the, got much. I know, I know John L was American Player of the Year. But as far as just improvement as a player, I thought Golden was a player who got the best from last year. Yeah, for sure. And a quick look at what Golden did against some of the better teams on their schedule last year. Um, Vlad Golden did not necessarily dominate any of the best opponents. However, they only played one Big Ten team. That would have been Illinois. Vlad Golden was arguably the best player for Florida Atlantic in that game. He had 23 doesn't, points. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. All centers do that against Illinois. You're right. He fouled out in uh in just 19 minutes. He had 23 points against Illinois and fouled out. Uh 10 for 15 from the floor. Looking at some of his other games, he had 19 and 11 against Butler. He had 10 and 4 against Texas AM. Uh only 14 and 4 against Virginia Tech. And then Northwestern in the NCAA tournament, 19 and 9 with four blocks. One of the better games of his season. So um yeah, I think. I think he'd be good, right? He like we just talked about how the the centers are down in the Big Ten next year. Immediately, like where where is he? Is he the third best center in the Big Ten? Like who who's he behind next year if he commits to Michigan quickly here? Third, probably. Behind I think, TKR and Renew. Yeah, and honestly, like we're big TKR people. Still got to see what it looks like. I'm a big TKR person, but like. You know, if you're going off of what we've seen so far, it's probably Renew and then Golden. Yeah, I guess, like, I think a, a Vlad Golden numbers year from last season would be beyond our wildest dreams for TKR next year. Um, like, I if he goes 16 and 7 at Purdue next year, I think we'd be very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, to me, I pretty instantly could be the second best center in the league. And uh, with all due respect to Malik Renew as well. We sure? <laughs> like, yeah, we're sure. We are we sure Vlad Golden's not immediately the best center in the league next year? We sure? I mean, Malik Renew's putting up better numbers than Vlad, isn't he? What did what did Renew average last year? I think he averaged like seventeen and six, seventeen and seven. He? Okay, I mean, I buy I think, it. Cause I I think there's still a big jump for Renew without uh Khalil Ware too. Uh, Malik Renew averaged fifteen and six 
Flacco. How many assists did he average? Because I feel like he's an underrated passer. He is. He averaged two assists, two point seven assists. So much, much oh, better. I like, passer. Yeah, I feel like that'd be better than that. But okay. Yeah. Kind of, kind of speaks to what we're saying though. Like the the center spot is down next year, so if you can yeah. lock somebody in that's good, you feel pretty good about it. Uh, uh, the last thing we should end this with, and I don't know why we didn't bring this up in general. Vlad Golden's going to be twenty three starting next season. Yeah, I like that. Eight, I like that. Um, just obligatory. If he doesn't go to Michigan, where should he go? Like, if you were Vlad Golden, where would you consider? Paul, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've heard, uh, like, I think Illinois wanted to work their way in. At least their fans did. Uh, I've heard them mentioned. I've heard Creighton mentioned. I've heard Duke mentioned. Um, I don't know. Just kind of seems like people wishing, though. What about Notre Dame? He doesn't seem like a Shrews big to me. You don't think? No. Shrews, yeah. Shrews, wants, Shrews wants to go like five out. There was, I mean, we'll talk about it on another thing, but there was some rumor that someone slid in my DMs about Dane going to Notre Dame. That'd be crazy. I would love that. Uh, what's the percent chance he ends up in Michigan? I'd probably put it like 85, and that's just me me saying. The only thing that I think that could turn it, the only thing I think that could put it off is if somebody just comes in and just like, calls Michigan poor and like he forgets about Dusty when he has a giant check on his table. Yeah, it could happen. Um I think I mean the the other path of it not happening is like Danny Wolf commits quickly. And then Vlad's like, huh? Like I what I will say is Dusty we're gonna find out who Dusty is very quickly here. Because from all accounts, Dusty has a lot of shots out there right now like he's shooting a shot with a lot of folks that's great i like that he also doesn't have an assistant coaching staff right now so like this is all dusty in the dms basically like hey i want you and uh it is it's unique to me that he's doing this with two centers and also probably trying to figure out the john l davis elijah martin stuff and you got to get one of them like you you can't fumble both of them if you're dusty so we're going to find out. We're going to find out how good Dusty is at this game in uh, a few short weeks here. And if he somehow does pull off the uh, Danislav Golden Wolf front court, I'm all the way in, Cart. I'm all the way in. <laughs> good Lord. There is my bookie. My bookie is our favorite place to place bets. And you can place bets with us. Cart, tell the people about my bookie. Let me tell you about my bookie quickly here. It has absolutely everything you need. It has odds boosts, parlays, expert predictions, alternate lines, anything that you need. My bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now we have a first deposit bonus up to $1,000 if you use promo code sleepers. That's promo code sleepers for, I almost messed that up, Greg, but it is promo code sleepers for a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. The madness is winding down, but there's still plenty of time to get some bets out there. Do so with my bookie, the official sports book of Sleepers Media. Yeah, that's promo code Sleepers, or as Card says, promo code Sleepers. It's <laughs> promo code Sleepers. Uh, thank you, my bookie. Link in the description of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video.